Well, I've always been fascinated by drawing. I've drawn most days of my life, but I never really thought of the art school. I wanted to be a fighter pilot in the Royal Air Force, but my eyes wouldn't let me do it. And although I've learned to fly subsequently, uh, the RAF wouldn't have had me. So I left school in the autumn of 1956, having got whatever you needed to get, the high school of Glasgow, just along there. And I got various jobs, lasting almost a week in some of them, uh, and ended up as an apprentice in Rolls-Royce. It's interesting that the new director of the school, just been in post for nine months, has an almost similar background. He was a Rolls-Royce apprentice in Bristol, Tom Inns, a very good guy, of course. Uh, I really was bored out of my mind in Rolls-Royce. I also started at half past seven in the morning. And I discovered the art school started at half past nine. So I went, I arranged to go and see it in some wet, miserable December evening in 1956. I trudged up the hill and was interviewed by Harry Jefferson Barnes, later Sir Harry Barnes, and an absolute dead ringer for uh, Blunt, Anthony Blunt, in a curious way. Harry was a, came from Sheffield. His father was a surgeon, quite Professor Roland Barnes, I think he was, a very distinguished man. Anywho, he was a, a gentleman. Uh, and the, he looked at my stuff and said, why don't you think of industrial design? And I said, tell me what it is. And he did, and I said, I think that's for me. Well, he said, you can't join the course now because it started. But there's a junior non-dip class, which, uh, really is a precursor to the diploma course, the four-year diploma course. So I found myself at January morning in 1957 uh, up in room 52A. I hope it's still there. It's off the hen run, so I doubt it. Uh, 16 girls in May. An educational experience coming from an all-boys school. Anyway, that gave me an introduction to school, and I can't say I warmed it much at that time. It seemed a kind of alien environment to me in many ways. It wasn't until I got in the following autumn into the diploma course and met some great characters and people, like Big Bob Bushnell, the tired chairman of the Hickman White Carpet Company, uh, that I began to see life in a different perspective, and the student dances and the various other things and the introduction to the secondary effects of alcohol were well exemplified by what we did. Anyhow, it was a great time. And I really fell through the whole thing and suddenly the School of Art just went like that with me and I went like that with it. And uh, we would have worked all the day, all the hours that we could get. We had a marvellous teacher in the first and second year, W. Drummond Bone from here, Drassman, uh, Stephen Bone, uh, Muirhead Bone the Etcher, of the same family. Anyway, he taught drawing as a discipline. I wanted no nonsense about it and perspective and all the things that actually are good for industrial designers. And when I draw, and I try to do this or paint every day, some even just for a bit, and I'll go home tonight and go at the thing I'm doing at the moment, I'm thinking of the things that Willie Bowen taught me. Two years of that and into industrial design with Jimmy Goodchild. And again, an eye-opener. Do not design a refrigerator, design a method of keeping food cool. Profound. You know, you go below what it seems, and that's the way creative thinking is encouraged and engendered. And I tried to put that over to the students that I taught, because I actually liked the business of teaching. And we were actually a, a student largely oblivious of the Macintosh building. There were people like Bliss, like Barnes, who recognized it and got going. This, the city would have burnt these buildings perfectly happily. That's probably a wee bit unfair at that time, but they weren't too interested. They weren't too interested. Uh, and we were interested in what we were doing, more than anything. 